I probably shouldn't be telling y'all this, but I'm going to tell you because it's the truth and the truth will set you free. So a lot of people who make high income, you know, let's say 85 grand a year and up, a lot of us seem to be under the notion that because you make so much money that there's no need to save. And that is complete crap. Let me tell you a quick story. Back in 2017, right, I was at work and I got approached by someone who told me about an opportunity. It was like a business opportunity, really big thing, really big deal. I was pretty much told that I could generate very strong streams of passive income if I were to look into this opportunity. He said he owned a business. I was like, cool. Me being young and hungry, I was all for it. So I went to check it out, ended up going to this big event where it was like big mastermind. It was 100% free and I gained a lot of value and a lot of knowledge from it. So check this out. A speaker was actually up there and she was just like, dig your well before you're thirsty. Like this is what her introduction was to her speech. So this is how she started off. So just based off of her saying that I already knew what she meant before she even started talking, I knew she was going to talk money and I got super fired up about it because I felt like at the time I really didn't know that much about personal finances or how I could better set myself up for the future. So I was all ears and I was all eyes. Like I was glued on the speaker. I was like, say it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And she was like, I'll say it again dig your well before you're thirsty, all captivating and stuff, right? And I'm listening and she's, ba and basically her message was, we don't have the luxury to sit back and think that everything's all good right now. We don't have that type of privilege right now. Getting too comfortable is something that is a mistake that a lot of us fall into. We don't live in a world where it's okay to get too comfortable or rely on one stream of income or rely on your company to always be there and not lay you off or not fire you. Like this was basically her message to the whole room. I was eating it up because I felt the same way. Um, maybe not all of you watching this video feel the same way about what I just said, but whether or not you do, this message is still strong and it's relevant to this video. And the message is you have to dig your well before you're thirsty. You have to have something to fall back on. You have to have a plan for life, whether you're making low income or high income. I'm sick and tired of hearing people say things like saving money is for broke people. Like, bro, the top companies in the world have budgets. The audacity that some people have when they say things really shocks me. The best companies and businesses in the world have accounts and money and people that manage the money and they manage the investments and they manage the assets and they manage everything. They manage how much cash they have. Yes, they have a cash reserve, which is your equivalent of a savings account. So if they're making, first of all, if their whole worth is like something trillion, like, 2.9 trillion, I think, is what Apple's worth is right now. And they have a crazy amount of cash reserves. Who are you to not have one? You get what I'm saying? Like, you have to have something to fall back on. And so that's where the savings account comes in. That's where the emergency fund comes in. Now, I'm telling you guys all this stuff now because this is 2022, right? We're about to end 2022 and go into 2023. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in 2023 and make a whole lot of videos on saving money. This channel is obviously known for that type of thing, but I want to talk about whether you're making low income, whether you're in the middle and you're making like what you would consider to be average income, whether you're making high income and you're deep into the six figures. This video is for you because there's so many people who make a lot of money who are living paycheck to paycheck. There's so many people out there who work hard and do crazy good, meaningful work and they're all stars at their job, but they have nothing to show for it because they don't have any money in their savings account. They, they're not going to be able to give their kids anything for their college fund if they wanted to do that. They're not going to have the level of retirement accounts that they want to have because they're not doing what they're supposed to do. And what they're supposed to be doing is digging their well before they're thirsty. Why wait until pandemic 2.0? Why wait till another 2020 happens to realize, oh crap, I'm a human and I'm always going to be thirsty. I'm always going to need water. 
So why wouldn't I build my well right now while I'm ahead, while nothing's going on, while everything is all good? And because we don't think this way, we can run into some problems, we can run into some traps. You can think, you know, well, you know, I've, I've spent most of my life to build the skills to accumulate the amount of money I'm making now, so why should I have to save? I'm gonna just get it right back at the end of the month anyway. Why should I have to save? I make so much money, I, I can do this with my eyes closed. Okay, you don't get arrogant about it. That's the whole problem. What you have now, you got to be thankful for and realize that what you have is a blessing and it's a privilege to have that. And to be so arrogant as to say that, well, I shouldn't have to do that. Like, what? 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 That is ridiculous. You've got to be meaningful and intentional with your money and have a plan for it. And understand that it's not all for you, it's not all for show, it's not all for the cars and the beautiful houses and the apartments and going to nice restaurants all the time and having the nicest clothes and having the nicest jewelry, the nicest watches, the nicest shoes. These things are nice to have, don't get me wrong. And there's nothing wrong with wanting these things, there's nothing wrong with getting these things. But everything is wrong with not actually having a plan to save your money. Everything is wrong with not having a savings account or an emergency fund or both. Because let's be honest, even if you had 50 grand in your savings account right now, how long would that last? It probably wouldn't even last you a year if you lost your job today. And if it did, then that's great. But it's limited time and inflation is going up. So everything costs more. So that's going to eat away at how long that money can last. We've got to make this real life and it's not just from saving but i think that's a great place to start because that's fundamental if you can save money that means you can get out of debt if you can save money that means you can invest and make your money grow if you can save money you can think about what business you want to have for yourself if you're the type of person who wants to own your own business and you can see okay well this is how much money i want to invest so this is how much money i need to save up to then invest in what i want to invest in i might want to invest into a social media manager how much does that cost do i have the money on hand to afford putting someone on payroll right now you get what i mean and, and no matter what level you're at if you're just an adult who has kids if you're an adult who's single if you're an adult who's a business person if you're an adult who's just worried about their profession and that's all they want to worry about and build from there that is fine but with everything that you do and with whatever role you have in life you, you've got to have plans for your money if you have plans in life, you've got to have plans for your money. If you plan on going on a vacation, okay, well, what's the budget looking like for that vacation? If you plan on having kids, okay, what do I want to provide for them? Do I want to invest for them while they're like five years old? So by the time they're 18, they can be stacked with money. Do I want to build a trust fund for them? Do I want to have a mini savings account for them? Like even if you feel like you're not going to have enough to give them the world as their kids and, and invest for them, that's fine. What can you give them? What plans do you have for them? This is building your well before you're thirsty. You don't want to get to a point where you've accumulated so much money, but you have nothing to show for it because you've built nothing. You've given nothing. You've got no assets. You just have possessions that look nice and look flashy that look like you have money but the only thing that having things proves is that you had money and now it's spent on this item that's what it proves and when you get too comfortable and when you get to a place where you're not where you're basically taking your money for granted when you get to that place that's what i'm talking about that's the place that you don't want to be in it's just like in a relationship. I'm sure you watching this video right now have been in a relationship where you were with someone and you just started taking them for granted and then one, one moment they were just gone. Now, they may have come back or they may have just left and never came back and never wanted anything to do with you. But you realize at that point, what you had was something special and you lost it. It's the same exact thing with money. If you have a great job that's paying you 85 grand or higher and you're making good money and you're just like chilling, like, yeah, I, mean, I get paid again, so I'm gonna have it again. I'm, I'm just keep blowing my money and having the false security of thinking that I have another paycheck coming perpetually. Like, do you know how many things can go wrong in life for anybody, even for businesses? So when things go south, you may not have the security you have right now. So if you're able to dig your well now and build your savings account now and build your emergency fund now, and you start with maybe the three to six months, and then maybe you step it up to what I recommend, the four to eight months worth of paychecks, 
then you start to really build and you really understand how long it's going to take to do these things. But it's better to have it built than to have absolutely nothing. And then a catastrophe happen and you can't do anything about it because you didn't dig your well before you were thirsty. It's a very dangerous game to play. Wouldn't you rather be someone who's financially prepared in a world that is perfect than be someone who is not prepared at all in a chaotic world where everything is going wrong and a recession hits and crime is going up and prices are going up? Which one would you rather be? So what if everything is all good? Everything was all good in 2017 and then 2020 happened. I thank God that I heard that message back in 2017 because it really set me straight to get my mind and my thoughts and my actions in order to do the things I need to do to be prepared by the time disaster hit. You never know when it's going to hit. It may hit again in your lifetime. It may not. But you, you want to be prepared either way. And you know what? You want your family to be prepared. Even whether you're here or not, you want your kids to be prepared. This is a lifelong thing. This isn't just something that, yeah, I'm going to go to work today. I'm going to go home. I'm going to sit on the couch. I'm going to get some Uber Eats. I'm going to buy things I don't need. You can do that sometimes. But if you do it too much, you'll start eating into opportunity. And the opportunity is looking at how much money you can really save at the max every single month, but still enjoy your lifestyle. If you don't know what that number is that you can save at the maximum and still enjoy your lifestyle and have, you know, a few hundred or maybe even a thousand dollars to yourself every month, however you want to play it. I mean, if you don't know what that number is, though, you're not going to be calculated when you make these decisions. So one night can turn to seven nights of Uber Eats. One weekend at the mall can turn to every weekend at the mall spending five hundred dollars on yourself just because you got it. You could spend money on a car that is Really nice, really flashy, nice German car, nice BMW, a nice Audi, right? Everybody's looking at you like, man, that's a nice car. Yes, yeah, nice car. But can you afford it? Have you assessed the cost of living? Have you looked at how much it's going to cost for maintenance of that car? If you can handle it, hey, that's all you. But the problem is a lot of us don't look into what we can afford. Do we, we, we think what we can afford is the maximum amount of money that we can spend on something. Right. So if you make 70 grand a year, a lot of people think, oh, I can spend 70 grand a year, not realizing they, they get like probably 15K of that chopped off just by default, because that's how taxes are. <laughs> Uncle Sam don't care about your life. He'll come with with the baseball bat. Matter of fact, he'll come shoot you in your kneecaps. He's coming for his money. You better give it to him, too. So don't max out your salary. Right. Don't max out these things. See how much. You can put for yourself. Think about how much you can actually save for yourself because I'm telling you and I'm here to tell you right now, if you didn't know we're in a recession and it may not feel like it, it may not look like it, it may not seem like it, but just take a look at the stock market and look at how bloody it is and look at how red it is. We're in a recession and I don't know how long it's gonna last. A lot of geopolitical and economic things are happening right now that maybe or maybe not you're aware about, but whether you're aware of it or not, it is happening. And that's why it's so important to stay educated on personal finance and educated on what's happening, like what current events are happening and what businesses and what sectors and what industries are being affected. Um, food shortages, things like that. You, you need to be aware of these things because they will affect you, whether directly or indirectly. This is why you need to save money on a high income. It's not just for low income earners this is for everybody everybody needs to have a certain amount of money and and ideally everyone says three to six months and even i say four to eight months of paychecks but ideally wouldn't you feel even more comfortable if you had a whole year's worth of money like in your savings account like a whole year's worth of of earnings in your savings account wouldn't you feel exhilarated to know that that's where you ideally want to be but it's going to take a while to get there. So for right now, make those goals three to six months, four to eight months. OK, 12 months. I'm not saying to only save your money. I'm not saying to never invest into anything. I'm not saying to never try a venture or to try to make more money. I'm saying with the money that you have now, are you using it to its full potential? And I always say, enjoy your life. Enjoy your life. Don't be so tight. Don't be 
so minimalistic that you just penny pinch every little thing. I made that mistake and I hated life a little bit. I'm not gonna lie to you, but there's a balance to everything in life. But what I'm saying is some people don't save at all because they feel like they don't need to. What kind of mess is that? Don't be that person. Be the person that's proactive and you can be the person that enjoys life, but at the same time, hey, I'm gonna put some in my savings. Just have a number in your head that you put every month into your savings. That's what I teach on this channel and that's what I'm telling you right now. That's what the best method is to do. And once you get comfortable with that number and you're able to increase it, automate that number and make sure it automatically happens so you don't even have to think about it anymore because personal finance is not something that should be on your mind 24 seven. Oh, what, what, how much money is in my bank account? How much money can I save this month? How do I pay my debt off? Once you take the mental capacity out of it, it gets really, really simple and really, really easy. And that my friend is how you start building your well before you're thirsty. I don't care how much money you make, you want to have a plan for your money, you wanna save your money, and eventually when you can invest your money grow your money and get to where you want to be so you can do the things that you want to do with the people that you care about the most that is what life is all about you are not meant to be sitting around struggling and confused and not knowing what to do with your money and i'm here to help you out with whatever you might need help with and i can give you a relatable story to go with it because i've made several mistakes financially i've made several mistakes in life and i'm here to give whatever wisdom i can impart on you before you go on about your day so hopefully you enjoyed this video but that is the video for today thank you so much for watching my name is reggie bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you control your finances and control your life thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video